Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over the acids and bases portion of the final exam. Um, this is for review. Acids should taste sour. All right. Acetic acid is found in vinegar. Acetic acid comes from acetate. We'll see that later on. Acetate is a polyatomic ion. Acids generally release H2 gas when they react with active metals. All right. Uh, remember, your acids will typically contain hydrogen. The only uh, model that does not rely on hydrogen being present for a acid is the Lewis. Um, so bronsted lori and Arrhenius are both going to incorporate hydrogen. Uh, when acid reacts with active metals, those hydrogen ions for, uh, come together, forming H2 gas. You end up uh, bubbling hydrogen gas. We can collect it in a balloon, um, of course, make it explode. Acids react with which of these? Bases to produce salts and water, salts to produce bases and water, water to produce bases and salts, or neither bases, salts, nor water. Well, of course, they react with bases and they produce salts and water. The very typical uh, reaction that we've seen many times is hydrochloric acid combining with sodium hydroxide, NaOH, to form. Okay. NaCl, that's your salt, your regular old table salt, and water, H2O. Your bases should feel slippery. Right, you can see that. Um, it's evident in bleach. Binary acid will contain hydrogen and one other element. All right. Hydrogen and two other elements, this would be... Uh, an example of an oxy acid. When one of those two is uh, oxygen. Moving on from question six, number seven, which of the following is a binary acid? Uh, binary, we should be looking at uh, an acid with two um, elements. All right, here we got H2SO4. This is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is an oxy acid. This is acetic acid. Um, if you break it down, this portion is the acetate ion. This hydrogen is the extra hydrogen, making it an acid. Here we have hydrobromic acid. Hydro, brome, ic acid. Remember, with binary acids, this is sodium hydroxide. Um, with binary acids, we have three parts to the name. We have hydro, this is the prefix. Then we have the root of the anion. The anion in this case is bromine, so the root brome. And then the suffix ic, uh, hydrobromic acid. The name of a binary acid, no, it has a prefix. That prefix is hydro, all right? Uh, 
begins with the prefix by? No, it begins with prefix hydro. Ends with the suffix us? No, it ends with the suffix ick. Begins with the prefix hydro? Yes, that is correct. An oxy acid contains oxygen and hydrogen only? No. Um, our oxy acids are going to contain oxygen, hydrogen, and one other element typically. All right. That other element could be uh, sulfur, it could be chlorine, um, it could be nitrogen, phosphorus, any of those other elements. If it were sulfur, what would we be looking at? We're looking at H. 2SO4, that would be sulfuric acid, all right, derived from the polyatomic ion sulfate. Which of the following is not an oxy acid? All right, an oxy acid, remember, recall, oxygen, hydrogen, and one other element. This A has hydrogen and oxygen, but it lacks that other element. This is going to be your answer. We'll go through the other ones, make sure that they're oxy acids as well. Hydrogen, check. Oxygen, check. One other element, sulfur, check. Sulfuric acid. Hydrogen, check. Oxygen, check. One other element, chlorine. Uh, this is perchlorate. Hydrogen, check. Oxygen, check. Chlorine, check. Uh, this is chloric chlorous acid sorry this is the chlorite ion chlorite which forms chlorous acid Now what we'll do, move on to number 11. Which of the following is perchloric acid? Perchlorate is, sorry, perchlorate is ClO4 with a minus one charge. What we'll need is one hydrogen ion to cancel out. Those uh, charges will cancel one hydrogen with one perchlorate, uh, leaving perchloric acid HClO4. Answer D. Chlorous acid, us, is derived from, uh, or will correlate with the suffix ite. So you're looking at the chlorite anion. Chlorite is ClO2 minus. Again, you'll need one hydrogen, so the charges will cancel. HClO2. Answer B would be appropriate in this case. Chloric, ic, correlates with eight. Uh, so you're looking at chlorate. Chlorate is ClO3 minus. Again, you'll need one hydrogen to counterbalance that negative charge. HClO3. Answer C. Compared with acids that have the suffix ic, acids that have the suffix us contain more hydrogen, more oxygen, less oxygen, the same amount of oxygen. They're always going to contain less oxygen. If you uh, take a look at our previous examples, all right, where we have chlor chlorous acid, all right, chlorous acid ending with the suffix us, polyatomic ending with the suffix ite, you have two uh, oxygens. Whereas if you look at the chloric acid, polyatomic ion chlorate, it will have three oxygens. Acids with the suffix ic contain less oxygen than those with the suffix us. An acid with the suffix ix produces an anion with the suffix eight. This would be for us, O-U-S. Okay. No, no. 
An Arrhenius acid contains hydrogen that does not ionize. That's incorrect. Our hydrogen will ionize. Hydrogen that ionizes form hydrogen ions. B is correct. Um, this is because this is evident in that it conducts electric current. Oops. Conducts electric current. Without those ions in solution, uh, we cannot conduct electric current. So those ions being present is a necessity. Moving forward to number 17, Arrhenius theorized that an acid is a chemical compound that increases the concentration of hydrogen ions when dissolved in solution. That is correct. Uh, remember, Arrhenius, you're looking at hydrogen ions for uh, acids, and you're looking at hydroxide ions for bases. So if, it, if the question is dead asked about a base, you would expect the hydroxide ions to increase, the concentration of hydroxide ions to increase, um, where B would be the appropriate answer if that was base. Which statement about Arrhenius bases is false? Some are ionic hydroxides. No, that's correct. All right, that's what we just said. They are hydroxides. They dissociate in solution to release hydroxide solutions in the solution. Well, you know, that's exactly what we just said in the last question. They increase the concentration of hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. No, that is not correct. So that would be false. Um, this is what bases, or sorry, this is what acids would do this. Okay, not bases. Some react with water to remove hydrogen ion, leaving hydroxide ions. Again, hydroxide, that's going to be base. So that is an accurate statement. Number 19. A substance that ionizes nearly completely in aqueous solution and produces H3O plus is going to be which of the following? A weak base, a strong base, a weak acid, or a strong acid? Um, the answer here is D, a strong acid. Okay, now it might confuse some people and you might not have, not have drawn the connection, but what is H3O? If you look at the water molecule, H2O, all right, the dot structure for water looks like this. You got six valence electrons on your oxygen. You have two hydrogens present, each with one valence electron. And what happens is these form a covalent bond these form a single covalent bond. That leaves you with your water molecule. Now with hydronium H3O+, when you have an acid, it's going to release your hydrogen ions. All right, Those hydrogen ions are positively charged. All this really is, is just a proton. Okay. Now what do you think would happen? Well, I think if it's in solution and it's free to move around, this hydrogen is going to gravitate towards one of these unpaired electrons. These are unshared, unpaired electrons. All right, so let's say it chills out right here. Well, what do you know could happen? Um, or what I know could happen is a coordinate covalent bond could occur where these two uh, electrons could form that covalent bond with that hydrogen ion, and that's what happens. What does this leave you with? One, two, three hydrogens and a positive charge. This is your hydronium ion, and that is the structure for your hydronium ion, H3O+. Number 20, which of the following is not a strong acid? Here we have nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and hydrochloric acid. All three of these ionize completely in solution and uh, are examples of strong acids. This was a specific example given in the notes. This is acetic acid, vinegar. This is a very common weak acid. The dilute aqueous solution of a weak base contains which of the following? Hydronium ions, 
anions, acid molecules, or all of these. A weak base is going to contain all of these things. It's going to contain your hydronium ions. It's going to contain your anions. It's going to contain acid molecules. All right. You can see these two things very easily. All right. These two are easy to see because on the right hand side of your uh, acid base reaction, you'll see your ions, your charged particles. Okay. But with a weak base, what you'll notice is that in every single instance, the yield symbol will be pointing to the right as well as to the left. And when that yield symbol points back to the left, it means that acid molecules are going to produce, be produced. These are uncharged particles. Those uncharged particles what do they do? Well, what's more important was what they don't do. They don't conduct electric current. So your answer, of course, is D, all of these, all of the above. Moving on to number 22, which of the following is a triprotic acid? Uh, tri meaning three, protic, protons, number of hydrogens. H2SO4, that's diprotic. H CH3, COOH, this is acetic acid. The hydrogen you're paying attention to is this one. This hydrogen is part of the acetate uh, polyatomic ion. So you do not pay attention to that, all right? Do not pay attention to that. It is monoprotic. Uh, HCl, monoprotic. H3PO4, triprotic. Looking at three hydrogens. Which of these is diprotic, okay? Di, you're looking at two protons. Um, you've got your sulfuric acid, H2SO4. That is diprotic. Um, again, monoprotic monoprotic, triprotic. Whose definition of acids and bases emphasizes the roles of protons? bronsted lorry indeed. Okay, looking at proton donation or proton exception for bronsted lorry For Lewis, you're looking at electron pair exception or donation. For Arrhenius, you're looking at uh, hydrogens or hydroxides. And Bohr, that's just absolutely bogus. A bronsted lorry acid is a electron is sorry a bronsted lorry acid is not an electron pair acceptor it is not an electron pair donor it is not a proton acceptor it is a proton donor it's going to be donating your protons an example uh, your diprotic acid h2so4 all right the reason why it is diprotic is because it has two protons to donate and it is sulfuric acid it's an acid so it is a proton donor according to the bronsted lorry model in the equation hcl plus water yields hydronium plus the chloride anion which species is a bronsted lorry acid all right so which one is going to donate that proton if you look here at hcl your hydrochloric acid what happens to it after the reaction takes place you see the rea the yield symbol this is where you know the dividing line on the of that chemical reaction so from the left to the right what changed well this hcl just became cl minus all right that's what's left over so what left hey a hydrogen not only that a hydrogen ion all right the hydrogen h plus left the hydrochloric acid leaving Cl minus. So this HCl is a proton donor, a hydrogen ion donor. A bronsted lorry base should be a proton acceptor. All right. This is your bronsted lorry base, a proton acceptor. If you look in the previous example, your water should be your bronsted lorry base. All right. Water is a base. Well, 
water is accepting a hydrogen in this case. We're going from H2O to H3O plus. All right, it's adding a hydrogen, which is why it goes from just two hydrogens to three hydrogens. And it's also adding a positive charge. Look at that hydrogen ion, hydrogen and a positive charge. Next up, question 28, in the reaction represented by the equation NH3 plus H2O yields NH4 with positive charge plus OH minus. Water, H2O, should be a what? Well, remember, a hydrogen ion donor is a bronsted lauryl acid. A hydrogen ion acceptor is a bronsted lauryl base. So water in this case, all right, we should pay attention. Water, H2O, turns into OH minus. What happened to it? Well, the number of hydrogens decreased, as did the charge. So it actually donated a hydrogen. Right? In this case, water should be a bronsted lorry base because it donated that hydrogen. Water uh, is an amphoteric substance. That means that it sometimes will behave um, in the manner of an acid, sometimes it'll behave in a manner of a base. You just saw that. A Lewis acid, okay, well, bronsted lorry says a proton acceptor and a proton donor um, are your bases and your acids, respectively. So Lewis is either, a Lewis acid is either an electron pair acceptor or an electron pair donor, right? For Lewis, the exception Okay, the thing that's doing the accepting is the acid. All right. Whose acid definition is the broadest? The Lewis definition is the broadest uh, because it's nonspecific. Basically, what, what I'm meaning when I say nonspecific, uh, sorry, kind of sloppy, but uh, when I'm saying nonspecific, it doesn't say what specific element is going to be present. With bronsted lorry you're always looking at hydrogen. All right, is it accepting or donating hydrogen? That's it. Faraday, well, that's not even an acid-based definition. Arrhenius, you're looking at hydrogen, or you're looking at hydroxide. Sorry, OH minus. Right, one of those two things. For Lewis, it doesn't necessarily have to have hydrogen in it. It's non-specific. You're only looking at electron pair exception or donation. An electron pair donor is a Lewis base. An electron pair acceptor is a Lewis acid. An electron pair donor is a Lewis base. Whenever ammonia donates an electron pair to form a covalent bond, it is going to act as which of these? Well, we're looking at electron pairs, so you know that it's either it's one of these, Lewis acid or Lewis base. It is not bronsted lorry base. It's not an Arrhenius acid because you're paying attention to electron pairs. Since it's donating those electrons, it should be a Lewis base. An electron pair sec an electron pair acceptor um, is your Lewis acid. Sorry, I'm freezing up a little bit. Next up, question thirty four. which can act as a Lewis acid but not a bronsted lorry acid. Remember, Lewis acid is an electron, uh, electron pair acceptor. Uh, bronsted lorry acid is a hydrogen ion donor. All right. uh, in this case, BF3 would be a Lewis acid but not a bronsted lorry acid because it lacks hydrogen. Conjugate acid should be 
your species that is formed by the addition of a proton to a base. Right. It's going to be what's left over. Uh, we'll see that. We're going to emphasize that here shortly. In the reaction represented by the equation, HF plus H2O uh, yields H3O plus plus F minus. A conjugate acid-base pair is, which of the following. Now what we're looking at is an acid that forms its conjugate base or a base that forms its conjugate acid. In this case, all right, hydrofluoric acid, HF, What's going to be left over after it reacts with water? All right, what's going to be left over? Well, the fluorine. Why is it fluorine that's left over? Because hydrogen donates a proton here. Hydrogen donates a proton to what? To water. Water accepts that proton. It goes from H2O to H3O. So these, there's always going to be two acid-base pairs, conjugate acid-base pairs. Those two are highlighted here. Okay, So which of them exists as an option? HF and H2O? No. Those are both reactants. F minus and H3O plus? No, those are both products. H3O plus and H2O? Yes, that is a pair. Uh, HF and H3O plus? No, those are not a pair. In the reaction represented by the equation, a conjugate acid-base pair is, again, same question, just different answer. In this case, the answer is B. In the reaction represented by the equation, HClO3 plus NH3 yields NH4 plus and uh, chlorate. The conjugate acid of NH3, all right, so NH3 is here. What is it going to do? NH3 turns into NH4 plus. What happens as that transition occurs? What happens? You add a hydrogen and you add a charge. So it is a proton acceptor. Right? It accepts a proton. So that is your base. Right? NH3 is a base. NH4 is its conjugate acid. Right? The conjugate acid of NH3 is the ammonium ion, NH4 plus. Number 39, in the reaction represented by the equation HClO3 plus NH3 yields NH4 plus plus ClO3 minus, the conjugate base of HClO3, all right, we're looking at HClO3, this will form the chlorate ion. And what's going on here? You're losing a hydrogen. You're donating a hydrogen. If it's a hydrogen ion donor, this must be your acid. That would be your conjugate base. The conjugate base of HClO3 is chlorate. A. In the equation, HI plus H2O yields H3O plus plus I minus. HI is a strong acid, and I minus, okay, this is a conjugate acid base pair. This is a conjugate acid base pair. And as you recall, the other two must be the other conjugate acid base pair. Well, in a conjugate acid base pair, what you will notice is that if this is a strong acid, then its conjugate base will be a weak base. By the same token, it's not, but if this was a weak acid, then it would produce a conjugate base that is strong, so it would produce a strong base. In this equation, we have acetic acid uh, combining with water to, perform, to form hydronium and acetate. Water is a weak base, right? so we're looking at water. Hydronium, therefore, must be a strong acid. In the equation, perchloric acid plus ammonia yields ammonium and perchlorate. Perchlorate is a weak base. Okay. So this is a weak base, WB weak base, and HClO4, your perchloric acid, that's a weak base, 
this had better be a strong acid. Which compound is produced by neutralization? Remember, neutralization, acid plus base yields salt plus water. Our very typical example, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, combining with hydrochloric acid, forming no other than table salt, NaCl, for your french fries, and some water to wash it down. Okay, uh, so which of these two products is present as an option? In this instance, water is present as an option. Which of the following gases does not dissolve in atmospheric water to produce acidic solutions? NO, NO2, O2, or CO2? The answer here, uh, O2 gas does not dissolve in atmospheric water to produce acidic solutions. All of these guys will produce um, various forms of oxy acids.